Savior Jesus Christ from the pulpit of Mount Zion United Methodist Church. Greeting you on this first Sunday of September, the fifth month since we've been able to worship together in person. But I'm inviting you today to participate with us in communion. And I'm reminding you that the blood of Jesus Christ still saves. The power of Jesus Christ still heals. And the presence of Jesus Christ still takes us through. Enjoy the service today. Amen.
our scripture this morning, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th of this month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the, and the two side posts in the houses where they shall eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. If anything remains until the morning, it should be burned. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in a hurry. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments, for I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just for a thought today, I know it was the blood. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we are so grateful to you for the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're grateful to you, Lord God, that the blood will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. It's there for us to receive our gift of salvation. God, I thank you and I praise you that because of Jesus, no further sacrifice is required. I thank you that because of Jesus, our salvation is secure. Now, God, as we approach your word, remind us of who we are and whose we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Throughout this pandemic, I have been thinking a lot about how we view success. Do we view success and in terms of how much we can accomplish, how many people know our name, all the affirmations of fame and fortune, or do we view success in a different way? And to whom or to what do we attribute our success? Some of us attribute our success to those persons that have been major influences in our lives, our parents, our teachers, our coaches, our Sunday school teachers, our pastors, and yes, sometimes even our politicians. There are many who, who think maybe they might have pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps, but if we're honest, we can say honestly that we didn't make it this far all by ourselves. In the same sense, there are many who attribute their salvation, their success as Christians to the type of church they belong to. It could be a Methodist church, a Catholic church, a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, but church membership does not save us. Church membership, in fact, doesn't impact our salvation at all. There are millions of church members who fill our pews on Sunday, but they are not saved. They preach, they teach, they work in the church, but they never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If church membership alone could do the trick, then certain churches could boast of a sure salvation and other churches would be a little bit iffy. 
But the source of our success and our salvation is exactly the same. It is only the grace of God that, that can account for our ability to overcome the many obstacles that we face. We're five months into this pandemic, and we have made it because of the grace of God. We're five months into a period of time that most of us have never seen, and yet we can remain without fear because of the grace of God. Many of us have been infected with COVID-19, and we can only say we survived because of the grace of God. Some of us have buried loved ones because of COVID-19, and all we can say is, if it were not for the grace of God, I don't know where I would be. See, our salvation, our strength, our hope comes from one source. We don't have to think about it or guess about it. We can agree with the songs of the songwriter who said, I know it was the blood that saved me. The text that I read focuses on the children of Israel as they are preparing to leave the land of Egypt and their condition of being enslaved. The people had suffered considerable hardship while in slavery and God is ready to deliver them. And so Moses commands each family to kill a lamb and to paint their doorposts and their side posts with the blood of the lamb. It was promised that prior to the deliverance, they were to eat a sacrificial lamb and then wait for God's death angel to pass. Moses has issued a series of pronouncements from God and, and the people of Egypt have endured plague after plague, and yet every time God lifts the plague, the people go back to their old ways, and Pharaoh refuses to let God's people go. And so on this last plague, God says to Moses, when this is done, they're going to kick you out of Egypt. And so Moses tells the people, anoint your top post and your side posts, and when the death angel comes, when he sees the blood, he'll pass over. Those who were outside of the protection of the blood of the Passover lamb would experience the death of their firstborn sons. But as the death angel passed, God passed over the children of Israel, not because they were Israelites, not because they were perfect people, not because they had already obeyed God's command. God passed over the houses of the people of Israel because the death angel saw the blood of the lamb. For Israel, the blood over the doorpost was more than simple lamb's blood over a doorway. The blood meant when trouble came, they would be under the protection of God, God's self. The Egyptians weren't sure about the threat Moses gave to Pharaoh, but God's people had already witnessed the hand of God in all of the plagues. And so when God says, put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost and the side post, God's people obeyed. Today, people of God are still protected by God. We're not protected from evil in the sense that nothing bad can happen to us. We are protected from the ultimate effects of evil. That's why Job can say, yet even if you slay me, yet will I serve him, because the bottom line is the spirit lives on after the body dies. So the, the blood of the lamb protected not just against physical death, but against spiritual death. For Israel, the blood represents God's provision. They're about to take a journey without knowing how long it will take or how they will be fed. They ate in haste and they carried a minimum of supplies with them. They counted on the power of God to provide for them. Just as Israel carried with them what they could, we are called to do the same not to hoard up for ourselves possessions and supplies, but to do what God calls us to do and be content with how God has blessed us. 
like the widow who trusted God to provide, although all she had was two sticks, a cup of meal, and a cup of, God, of oil. God is calling us to trust God with what we have and believe that God will provide the rest. We have learned through our lives that God is a provider. The blood of Christ does not promise us prosperity. When you become a Christian, you do not automatically become rich, nor do all of your problems melt away. But the word of God does give a promise, a provision of our daily bread. And that is the part of our prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. It is an acknowledgement then that all of our provision comes from God. So God's presence and the blood of Jesus Christ provide for us. But also, God's presence and the blood of Jesus Christ gives us revelation. Under the protection of the blood in Goshen, the Israelites received directions that reflected revelation. They were told of their coming deliverance, and it was a welcome revelation. Because of the blood of Christ, believers in these days and times can also expect a revelation of things to come. No matter how difficult the time, the blood of Christ has assured us the victory. It has been revealed to us through him in the very ways that he has provided for us. It has been revealed to us in the way that God protects us through our relationship with Jesus Christ. It is revealed to us in God's word. No wonder the songwriter declares, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, but a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of God's spirit, washed in his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ gives us the assurance that the cause of the kingdom of God will ultimately be victorious. It is a special revelation that is guaranteed by the blood of Christ. Finally, sisters and brothers, we have to remember that we owe our lives and our salvation to the blood. There's no other source to which we attribute our hope. That's why the songwriter declared, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Some may attribute their life's journey to education, but I know it was the blood. Some may think their hard work has bought them thus far, but I know it was the blood. Some might envision themselves as the source of their own good fortune, but I know there's nothing in me that guarantees success. I know it was the blood. There are some things in this world we cannot attain without the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a fountain from which you cannot drink, but the power of the blood brings you to that fountain that will never run dry. There is a promise that you cannot claim, but the power of the blood allows you to claim that promise of life abundantly and life everlasting. There is a hope that you cannot enjoy, but the power of the blood allows us to enter into the hope that's in Jesus Christ. The songwriter asked the question, what can wash away my sin? And then he answered, with the, with the answer that every born-again Christian already knows, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. When we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we sing with new meaning. I know it was the blood saved me. I know it was the blood that took my hatred and turned it into love. I know it was the blood that took my despair and turned it into hope. I know it was the blood that took my disgrace and turned it into honor. I know it was the blood that took my enemies and turned them into friends. 
I know it was the blood that took my worries and turned them into confidence. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon a cross. I know it was the blood that saved me. Yes, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, but I know it was the blood that saved me. Yes, some of us have recovered from COVID-19 because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Some of us still have an uphill battle to fight, but I promise you that the blood of Jesus Christ still saves. For Jesus died on a cross for you and for me. He died to give us each a chance to turn our lives around. He died to give us a chance to have a clean start and a clean slate. But early on a Sunday morning, he got up from the grave to guarantee and put the seal on my salvation. It is the blood of Jesus that signed, sealed, and delivered our salvation. And no earthly obstacle can take that away. Amen.
friends, five months into a pandemic, we are still experiencing Holy Communion in a way that does not allow us to come together physically. But though we are physically separated from one another, we are bound together as family through our baptism. As members of the household of God, we join together virtually, yet still present with one another as we gather across the miles. The Spirit of God is not bound by location or time. The presence of God's Spirit is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's Word, and now our shared eating of the communion loaf and drinking of the communion wine. Now, as we share in the great thanksgiving, each time I say the family responds, you will repeat back the response that I just gave you. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us. So we lift up our hearts and the family says we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. And the family says, day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away our love failing and our body's disease, you reached out to us again and again. You provided healing, wholeness, and new life to all who believed. When the flood came, you provided the ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remained steadfast. And the family says, day after day after day. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their praise and sing the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And the family says, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And the family says, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. Jesus freed the oppressed and announced that the time had come when God would save God's people. Jesus healed the sick. He's healing the sick even now. Jesus will continue to heal the sick even in the midst of a pandemic. Jesus will heal the sick day after day after day. On the night when Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take from this meal the power to be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of pandemic, protest and praise. Remind us that we're never distant from you. Remind us that in you there is hope and wholeness because we belong to you. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And the family says, Amen. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may be, can become whole again. This cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may be, can become filled again through Jesus Christ. These, then, are the gifts of God to the family of God, and the family says, thanks be to God. I invite you, then, to take your Holy Communion in whatever means you have, be it bread and juice, bread and wine, it can even be a pancake. However you take it, take it with these words. The body of Christ, broken for me for the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Christ, shed for me for the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Day after day after day, God, you give yourself to us. In two or three gathered in your name, in connection across the miles, and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, championed by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness to your healing and reconciling work in Jesus Christ. Amen. for the benediction. The peace of Jesus Christ has been poured out to you, guaranteed by his shed blood. Now you go into the world bringing hope, forgiveness, and peace to all you encounter. God's peace be with you today and every day. Amen.